What's up everybody, Sven Diesel here. We're gonna be uh, showing you how to tie up the perfect popper. This here is the Old Bass Edition. There's a ton of editions that you can get into. I'll show you here in a minute, but this is what you're looking at. It's basically a popper hook. It's gonna come in a little pack like this. It's got a popper head and the hook in there. You can see it comes in, I think, five or six in a pack, and they're relatively inexpensive. They come in a few different sizes. But this here, I like the big one. It's really nice to see, and it gives great top water action. I'm going to start here with some 6 aught uh, Semperfly wax thread, and I'm going to lay down some thread. I'm not going to lay it down at the front of this hook, and I'll show you why here in a minute. I just want some thread about midway back on the hook um, shank here, and I'll, I'll finish it off here at the bend, and I'll cut it out. And this will make sense in a minute. First off, we're going to set this popper um, head on there. And you can see there's already a slit in there, and it's supposed to just sit right on there. However, I find it wobbles a little bit. And so a little trick I came up with that really solidifies it is I take a lighter right here to the bend, and I just heat it up for about five seconds. And you got to be careful because the heat transfers along this hook bend and to that hook eye. And then I just simply press it on and make sure it's nice and level. Try not to touch that hook eye. But once it's positioned right there, I'll give it about five more seconds for it to cool. And now that popper is actually secured to that hook pretty good. You can see that it heated up and kind of went into the groove. And there we go. It's on there now. So that's step one of securing it to the hook. And I've hit it across some rocks and other items, um, you know, that it, it hasn't broke yet. So... I'm going to tie this now just a, a pop like a, bit, a traditional popper tail from what I've been using a lot this spring. I'm going to take about eight to ten pieces of flash, um, or you can use tinsel or crystal flash, and I'll just palmer them, or, or sorry, not palmer, I'll tie them in half and uh, work them down the bend of the hook, and then I'll, I'll line them up, kind of splay them out, and I'm going to trim it roughly a little bit longer than the overall length of the hook. So you can see that we basically have. I'd say it's not quite one and a half, maybe 1.25 times the length. And then for the tail, we're going to be using some of this American Hackle. This is Grizzly uh, color. It's by Whiting Farms. I really, really love these as uh, tails uh, for most of my poppers. And so I'm going to select a feather here and just kind of measure it out. I'm not pulling off the back of the saddle. I'm pulling off the sides to get some of these uh, feathers that are a little bit more tapered to a tip. And I'll just go ahead and tie that in on this side. I'm going to try my best to have it, you know, on my side of the hook shank going backwards. If you have it twisting on you a little bit, that's okay. We can fix that here in a minute. You can see how this one kind of went up and over a little on that last wrap. But we'll fix that because we're going to tie in some feathers on the other side. And we'll end up with a total of four feathers for the tail. Um, I think that works best. I've tried six. Um, I don't think it made a difference. And so four seems to be the magical number for me. But do whatever you think is best. And I'm going to do the same process here of just palm uh, fastening this feather stem to the back bend. You don't have a lot of room to work with, but um, right here we're going to see how that looks. Those look pretty good. And here's where you can adjust it. See how I'm pinching it right there on the bend, and then I did a couple wraps back into it. It basically reoriented the feather. You can bend them down a little bit, bend them up a little bit. Um, just make sure not to pull too hard because you could pull them out. Um, later, after we get the next ones in, I'll be securing it with a little bit of super glue so that it holds and is really durable. So like I said, we're going to be adding a total of four feathers. So I'm going to put two more on this side. Um, another color that works really well is yellow or, grizz or chartreuse in grizzly as well. Uh, that seems to be the colors that uh, imitate most frog bellies, I guess you'd say. And so that's why I stick to those magical three colors. But, you know, that's not to say a, a teal or a hot pink or purple might not work. Um, the sky is the limit, and you don't know until you fish it. So um, we'll tie in the last feather here. Notice how I'm just lining it up um, to get a rough estimate for the length. They don't have to be exactly the same length, but I want them to be generally in you know, roughly the same length, give or take, um, you know, a 64th of an inch. No, I'm just kidding. If they're off by a quarter of an inch, you're probably still fine. Um, some of them, my bigger poppers I've made, actually I'll taper them in inch segments as I work my way up the shank. And so there we go. I'm cleaning it up just a little bit with some really nice securing wraps. 
I like the way they look now, and they're going backwards at a great angle. They're not going to foul. They're pretty stiff, so I'm going to lay down a little bit of the Z cement um, made by, um, uh, I think it's Wopsy that makes this. And so this is kind of a Wopsy um, project, I guess. Um, so I'll lay that down, and um, once that's down, I'm going to let it dry. And then we pulled most of the feathers from the side here for that tail. Um, for this next part, I'm going to grab one of these back, a really webby, big fibered feather and I'm going to have to pull a little closer to break it off and then I'm going to basically palmer this to form the body so you can see we got some of this fluff I'm just going to preen that off so I kind of know where to end and I'm not going to use this whole tip um, although it's a really nice feather I'm going to tie it in right here where our tailing material ends and I'll do a few wraps here and then I will fold this tip back over and trim it out with my scissors and I got kind of some stray fibers it doesn't really matter but since this is a video I'm gonna you know trim them out and notice this grizzly is this but this feather look at that that sheen it has to it this is a really awesome uh, feather this is going to be a lip piercer for sure and so now we're just going to start with palmering this uh, uh, hackle feather working our way with touching wraps as close as we can up to that popper head um, I'm still trying to figure out what it's made of it almost seems like a dense styrofoam rather than a foam and it's, it's hard uh, whereas most of the popper heads from other companies I've tried are, are a very spongy foam this is very 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 dense so I'm just uh, palmering this up. Try to get those uh, on the underneath side kind of going backwards without stabbing yourself. This is a really sharp hook, and you're going to prick your thumb a few times while preening these back. But when this gets wet, I like that those smaller fibers at the tip that we tied in at the first, it kind of forms a cone. That's going to support these longer, webbier um, feathers. So as I pull it, it's going to kind of still maintain that body, that poof. And we'll go ahead and secure this uh, end, being careful not to lose it and undo all our wraps. But I'll do a, a couple behind, a couple in front wraps on this stem to secure it and try to clean up as many of these as possible. You can trim them out, um, use your thread to kind of work that down and then go up and over and secure it back. Nice. We want them out of the way for the following steps as well. Um, you know when you're when you're stripping it in it's going to naturally kind of go backwards but uh, for the finishing of this fly it makes it a lot easier if those are out of our way so um, we're going to do about three to four wraps here and we don't need to really do much you could super glue it at this point and just let it dry i'm just going to do a couple half hitches using my uh, small whip finisher here so there's one half hitch and we'll if i can get it off and then i'll do a second half hitch right here and you can do this with your hand as well if you want but we're going to be covering this in a little bit of resin here uh, later in the process and so I know it's going to be secure um, especially if I snip it out on top where the resin will go okay so we have our popper here with our tail on and that's why this is still tying flies but now we're going to end that and get into arts and crafts now um, if if any of you fished a rebel popper before that's where I get most of my ideas and we're going to paint this, but first I'm going to take some of this tape and just wrap over this hackle feather and kind of down around the hook point. And basically I'm covering up my vise so I'm not painting my vise because I'm going to be using the Copic airbrush. And I'm going to try and get that as close to the back of this as possible. And so you can see there I've got, you know, a scotch tape width. And here's the three colors we're going to be using. Um, let me show you what these are. This is a uh, olive uh, yellow and lipstick red. The lipstick red is very, very, very ironic because that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to use this end to kind of paint this front of it to be red. I don't know why that's what most of the rebel poppers do, and so that's what I do as well. Um, this particular uh, popper color scheme I'm going for is the um, Old Bass Edition. And so I don't know if there's a trademark on that, but I'm, I'm making it my own unique. So I think it's a little bit different I'm just using it as a template guide. So here's the Copic airbrush. I've got it hooked up to a little compressor here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the lighter color. You always start with the lightest because you can always go darker, but you can't go lighter. And we want the belly of this to be primarily white, but I'm going to add a little bit of this hot yellow um, and make sure to put up a little bit of a template or scratch piece of paper behind so that you don't get your desk 
And I'm just going to lay down a nice thin layer here, working my way up into the top. And then I'll do the other side. We don't want to get the belly of this too much. And so I'm just going to start more heavy toward the top and then fan it out as I go towards the belly. And we don't even need to paint the top because we're going to be going over it with a darker color. And so I'm just lightening this up. I'm kind of getting a little bit back in the um, towards the hook point there. Um, but primarily the belly will be white. And so we've got the top that's still white. I'm going to go with the, uh, the olive now. And the olive is a super dark color. So once I, like I said, you can always take it a lighter color to a darker color. But once I get that olive down too far, I can't go back. So I'm going to go start at the top here, test it out on the scratch piece of paper. I'm going to lay down a thin line. And you'll see that this is kind of laying, uh, you'll see a little bit of blemishes in the, the popper head. And that's OK. And then I'm going to twist it and work my way to the sides. And you can see how that tape is keeping those uh, hackle feathers from being painted and also out of the way. So we're going to work our way to the side. Yeah, that's looking really good. I'm glad this is turning out while I'm um, filming this. I'm just going to do a little more on top to darken that very, very top now that it's kind of absorbed and dried a little bit. And then work my way down. So um, when I'm doing these, I'm usually tying up uh, shoot, a handful at a time. So at this point, I'll take it out of the vise, put it to the side, let those uh, paint colors dry. But since we're not doing that, we're going to now use a black Copic marker and make our accents. Like I said, I'm using that old bass as the template. And they do a line here on the side. So I'm just going to use my thumb to kind of steady my hand and paint that line using the fine tip. You can see since this um, isn't fully dry, or maybe my marker's running out, um, it's, it's not getting super, super dark. And so I'm going to go over it twice, trying to follow the exact same lines um, so that it gets a little bit dark. But when we put the finished coat on, it will also um, darken it up a little bit. So we got those lines right there. I'm going to try to match them on the other side. And you can see how this is, this is, this is fun. Um, this is where your artistic dream becomes reality. I'm just kidding. I'm not that great at this. But I can see how this is really addicting and guys get into, you know, painting lures all the time. I follow a few guys that um, make them out of the woods and, and plastics and spend, you know, do wicked paint jobs. This is probably uh, disgusting to them. But I'm going to put some stripes down the back. Just freehanding it, you could uh, use a template and uh, you get out your airbrush, but for this, I'm just gonna, I want more stripes. And so I'm just gonna lay those down and trying to create them so they go right over the middle, down even on each side. So you see, I got one that's a little bit weak right there. I'll come down a little bit more, touch it up, and these ones here at the back. So that looks pretty freaking good to me. Um, check it over. Nice. So once we put the finished coat on, you can't go back and repaint it. And for this, I'm just going to use some some eyes. Um, we can take this tape off now, but uh, your eye selection, the sky's the limit. Um, I think on this, the eyes do make a difference. I typically use a lot of uh, bright orange, uh, yellows. And for this, I'm just going to use these. Uh, I think these are rainbow. Um, but I position them down a little bit. Mine might go a little bit higher. I've seen a lot of guys do them to the exact side. But this is for, you know, when it lands, it's going to go down a little bit. When you pop it and gurgle it, it's going to have some water go up. And here's what I'm using for the final coat. This is the Raid Zap Flex. I've uh, been using it on popper heads, and I'm having good luck with it. I've had a few issues, um, and I, I don't know why. On some of the foam poppers, it is either shriveled up or um, when it takes a beating. It, but I haven't lost any paint jobs, and that was my main concern. And so I always cover the eyes first so that we have a nice layer. And here's me getting that resin right there in that gap covering our thread. Now you got to remember, um, you don't want to get the eye of the hook covered with resin. Otherwise, you got to get creative and um, figure out how to clean that out. And then we also have to fill this crack. Um, you don't have to fill it all the way since um, we made that, uh, we heated up the hook and set the hook into the popper. I think that makes it pretty secure. But covering this whole thing in a resin is going to uh, bond that in between, uh, make it one universal uh, coat all the way around. It's got a little bit of flex to it. So when, you know, 
I, I hit a rock pretty hard um, on the corner of the face of this and I, I actually had a little chip and the resin pulled off of the the red part the the, the mouth I guess and it actually um, took some of the paint with it um, and and but the side was still intact so I just put a little bit more red on it and uh, put another coat of resin on and I'm still fishing it so um, you want to make sure you smooth this out um, a little trick if you've got a drying wheel is when I'm tying up a few of these at a time I'll place this in the drying wheel while it's still wet and let it just rotate around for about 10 to 15 minutes before I cure it and then I just cure them all while they're on the drying wheel and it's I don't know why I can't get this resin to fully cure tack free but what I do is I put it out in the sun uh, and, it, and it cures like just like you'd buy a Rapala off the shelf at uh, the sporting goods store and I like it with one coat but I'm gonna put two coats on so I'll just speed through that same process just putting a little more heavy resin in that crack um, and then we'll cure it up and there is the uh, perfect popper it's got a I consider it fly tying because I'm I'm tying the tail on um, it's a little bit of arts and crafts but uh, that looks pretty sexy this is the old bass edition um, based off of a color scheme from the Rebel Popper. I've added glitter to them, but this I've had really good luck with. I'll post a few pictures here, but uh, tie some up, color them in your favorite colors, and hopefully they pierce some lips. Mm -hmm.